They come to Tijuana at the rate of two million a month. Some go to the high lie, others to the dog races. Many just come to shop, or to dine, or dance. Whatever their pleasures, tourists account for 25% of Tijuana's economy, and city officials take great pains to keep them happy. While there are still a few reminders of its wild and woolly past, Tijuana no longer is the border town made infamous by the 1965 expose, Hole of the Earth. Regular vice sweeps, along with urban renewal, have brought a new character to Avenida Revolucion, a main street once crowded with brothels and burlesques. For the most part, the rowdy sailors and high school boys of yesteryear would find modern Tijuana a tame scene. These days you can see and buy more flesh in San Diego. And that's just the way city fathers like it. It has been a great effort of everybody uh, in order to change the bad image of our city who lasted until 20 years ago. City officials are reluctant to talk about legalized casino gambling. They say that's a tricky federal question, but there's no denying that sports wagering is a big business in Tijuana. At the High Life Fronton, a downtown landmark for more than 30 years, the betting is brisk. On a good night, the handle runs upward of $25,000. Some of the most avid followers are Americans. How do you do with the betting? <laughs> Not too good. <laughs> keeps moving all the time. It's an exciting game. We come here expecting to lose so we're even. That means we're the winners, right? Perhaps the earliest forerunner of racquetball, High Lie pits eight men or doubles teams against one another in rotation, with the first to score eight points taking the round. For those who like to wager on four-footed competitors, the lights of Agua Caliente burn for the dog races. Ten a night, eight greyhounds to a heat. The competitors are lean and high-strung and every bit as pampered as racehorses. And the betters are knowledgeable. How often do you come down here? Mm, every other night or so. Every other night? Do you bet on the dogs? Yes, yeah, sometimes. About how much do you bet? Two dollars usually. After the dogs are locked in the starting gate, the race is on and over with in a flash. For visitors with some winnings or a weekend to celebrate, Tijuana's cantinas can be a world apart from those in San Diego. Once you get to know the places to go, it's great. It's a lot different from San Diego, things you can do here and you can't do elsewhere. For those fed up with high restaurant prices in San Diego, several Tijuana restaurants offer a first-class cuisine at economy-class rates. You can dine in the Aztecan splendor of Gran Tio Cali, the Rococo elegance of Reno's, or the disco decor of Tijuana Tilly's. For those seeking a more traditional ambiance, El Abajino offers mariachi serenading with old-fashioned melodies. The topper this night was a trio of folkloric dancers easily more daring than any disco derby. It's perhaps the last place to find the nightlife that made Tijuana notorious among American sailors, high school students, and conventioneers. Today, La Zona Norte is frequented mainly by Mexican nationals, many waiting for a chance to sneak across the border nearby. The merchants here purvey liquor, honky-tonk music, and the sight of naked women, in some cases trading in flesh as well. The senior attractions aren't hard to find for those who know their way around, but most innocents abroad need directions. So, as is almost customary, we asked a Tijuana taxi driver to show us the wild side. Rafael Aguilar was happy to oblige, promising us almost anything, but as it turned out, we just got taken for a $20 ride. Are there still donkey shows in Tijuana? Well, uh, we'll go up there to the corral, see if you like it. Okay. Yeah. You got cockfights and things like yeah. that? Well, the cockfights were over. They were, over. They, they were here, you know, last... Uh, 15, 15, it was the last, 15 and 16 of September, it was the last day. All around here used to be nothing but cabarets and, and saloons and bars, you know. They used to have a lot of fights, you know, and drinking and uh, everything, you know. But uh, nowadays, you know, well, it's slow. We were chauffeured to a series of dives in Zona Norte, where we found a few dispirited patrons sipping watered-down drinks and watching equally dispirited go-go girls bumping and grinding to a mariachi beat. On this night, there were no donkey shows to be found, Aguilar says they can't be arranged on short notice, but police claim they got rid of such bestialities a long time ago. So, perhaps as a consolation, our driver took us to a trailer court saloon in the red light quarter. The women there were eager to do business, but not with cameras or news people around. We left convinced there was nothing more exotic here than in any San Diego massage parlor. Striking out on foot, we encountered a few revelers who had retired early underneath the stars, and a few more with some reveling still ahead of them. What are your favorite things to do? 
bar hopping, what else? <laughs> Who else? Plenty of drinking here. It's a great town. We're partying. You gotta watch out, but I like it. <laughs> Sometimes visitors get into trouble in Zona Norte. When it can't be straightened out, they wind up at police headquarters, or occasionally in the car cell. In the past, dealing with Tijuana police could be an ordeal of time and money. Officials say the police force of today is more professional and sensitive to tourists' problems. Also, there's now a state attorney general for tourism affairs. I had a misunderstanding down here, and it, it seemed to be very complicated. And this man stepped up, and uh, he took care of me. He took me to the police station and talked to all the right people. And he really helped me and made me feel like this was a place for me to visit. They don't look or sound much different from American discos. After all, disco is an almost international language and culture, but those in Tijuana have an unmistakable foreign flavor. Attracting Mexicans and Americans alike, Tijuana's discos have the advantages of staying open till 6 a.m. and serving liquor to patrons between 18 and 21. For otherwise underage sailors, students, and working youths, they're the places to go in this area. It's a change from America, different people and everything, they get together, it's nice. Oh, I just come here just to have a good time. You're treated more like a grown-up here. Some of the hottest discos in Tijuana are Odyssey 2000, Marco's, and Charlie's New Chili, the latter boasting perhaps the swankest decor and the smartest set of dancers. The drinks there, by the way, are the highest priced. On some nights, the DJs are spelled by heavy metal rock and roll bands or brassy disco ensemble, all singing in English. The Tijuana disco scene takes a while to get warmed up. A lot of Americans don't make it until after two, but once it does, it cooks until daybreak. 